Hey, it's Mark, and this is Alter Ego Comics TV. I'm back with a stack of recommendations and information for you on this new comic book day, March 10th, 2021. Lots of great stuff this week, a lot of new number ones, and some truly heavy hitters that you're not going to want to miss. So, first up is my pick of the week, The Joker, issue number one, written by James Tinian IV, art by Gilliam March. And this spins out of Infinite Frontier, issue number zero, which came out two weeks ago, last week, last week, yes. Um, and also, you know, kind of spinning out of Joker War, but you don't have to have read either one of those to understand what's going on. Basically, the Joker is the most wanted criminal in the world at this point, and there are lots of people that want to see him captured or possibly killed. And this really turns out to be more, I think, of a, of a Jim Gordon story than a Joker story. But, of course, calling it Joker and putting the Joker on the cover is probably going to sell more copies. But this really is a Jim Gordon story as well. Uh, he's retired now as commissioner, kind of trying to figure out what he wants to do with his life. Uh, his son James is dead, and he's kind of floundering. And a group approaches him about... Uh, going after the Joker, and not just apprehending him, but killing him. And of course, Jim Gordon has a long history with the Joker. In this, uh, the killing joke is in continuity. So there's a, there's a lot of bad blood between these two guys. It was really, really solid. was pleasantly, was just pleased, not pleasantly surprised. It's James Tinian, who's doing a heck of a job with Batman ever since he took over, and his creator on stuff is off the hook. So can't recommend Joker enough. It was fantastic. Another new number one this week is Proctor Valley Road. This is written by Grant Morrison and Alex Child. Artwork by Naomi Franquiz. This is for fans of Something is Killing the Children. Um, kind of teenage horror type stuff. Really, really dug it. Uh, it takes place, I believe, in the 70s, if that matters to you. It might be present day, but was really solid. It's, uh, you know, Scooby-Doo or Buffy on steroids, but also, again, for fans of Something is Killing the Children. Written by Grant Morrison, so you can't go wrong there. Well, you can, but it's not a superhero book. Proctor Valley Road gets a big thumbs up as well. For the younger crowd, or for those of you that just like uh, fun, upbeat, light stories, we get Thor and Loki Double Trouble, written by Mariko Tamaki, artwork by Gurihuru. This is a miniseries, I think it's a four-issue miniseries. Uh, very fun, very lighthearted. Uh, Loki and Thor as teenagers uh, getting into trouble, and Loki trying to trick Thor into doing things he shouldn't be doing. Perfect for the young one in your life that's a fan of Thor or the Marvel movies, or, again, an adult that just wants some lighter fare from uh, Marvel. Children of the Atom, issue number one. This is a long-delayed project because of COVID-19. This was supposed to come out a year ago and is just now coming out. This is written by Vida Ayala. Ayala. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trip over that every time. Artwork by Bernard Chang. This is possibly the next generation of X-Men. There's a young group of mutants that kind of model themselves after the X-Men. But what happens when Krakoa and the, the real X-Men discover that these kids are out there doing their thing, you'll just have to pick it up and see. This is perfect for any of you that are enjoying any of the X-Books or if you want to see kind of a Teen Titans-esque X-Men story. DC Future State is kind of sort of over. There's still some titles that are trickling out, but Infinite Frontier is upon us, and we get the first issue of Wonder Woman as part of Infinite Frontier. This is Wonder Woman number 770 with the new creative team of Becky Cloonan and Michael Conrad on writing duties, Travis Moore doing the art. Diana is dead. We saw that at the end of uh, Dark Knight's Death Metal. And also in Infinite Frontier number zero, which again came out last week. So now she's in Valhalla, and the the most fun the most fun part of this book is that this all takes place using lots of Thor lingo. In fact, there's a Thor in here because Thor you can't you can't copyright uh, a a god that's been 
written in history for a very long time. So we get Asgard, we get Valhalla, we get Thor, we get Ragnarok. All that stuff is in here, but with Wonder Woman. So if that's your thing, you should check it out. There's also a backup story featuring a uh, young Wonder Woman that we saw in Wonder Woman number nine, or Wonder Woman 1984, written by Jordi Belair, artwork by Paulina Gauchot, and that was also very good. We get a double dose of Spider-Man this week, Nonstop Spider-Man, again, a book that's been delayed for a year due to COVID-19, is now out, written by Joe Kelly, artwork by Chris Boccolo, and by that by those two pieces of information, three pieces of information, it's a Spider-Man book, it's written by Joe Kelly, it's got artwork by Chris Boccolo. You should know whether or not you want to pick it up. Uh, not real clear how this is set, whether it's out of continuity, not out of continuity, but just kind of taking place at an unspecified time. Uh, there's also a backup story, which involves Baron Zemo, and that one is by some people, Dale Eaglesham's on artwork, I can tell that much just by looking at it. Uh, da, 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 da. Or maybe it doesn't tell me. Come on, people. Well, this has been exciting, hasn't it? I can't find the credits for that backup story, but Nonstop Spider-Man is here. Over in Amazing Spider-Man, Spidey gets a new suit. That may be enough of a reason for you to pick it up. Uh, and a new job. His job is kind of cool. He's back working for a familiar, mustached, angry man. So Amazing 61 is the first appearance of the new costume and Spidey's new gig. A new spider era begins here, as it says on the cover. We'll stick with Marvel for another minute here. Deadpool, nerdy at 30. Nerdy 30. So we're celebrating 30 years of Deadpool, which with a ton of stuff in here. Uh, again, you kind of know if you want this. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight different Deadpool stories by the people that have been involved with Deadpool. Joe Kelly, of course, wrote Deadpool in the 90s. Scotty Young, who wrote Daredevil in the last couple of years. Kelly Thompson, the current writer of Daredevil. Fabian Nicienza, a co-creator of Deadpool. Gail Simone, who has written Deadpool. Daniel Way, of course, one of the most popular Deadpool artists, uh, writers, I should say. Jerry Dugan and Brian Posehn, uh, experienced Deadpool folks. And, of course, Rob Liefeld and Chad Bowers. So, if you're a Deadpool fan, this is a must-buy. Nerdy at 30. Nerdy 30, it's a one-shot. I haven't read this, but a lot of people seem to be excited about it. God of War, Fallen God, written by Chris Roberson, artwork by Tony Parker. This is a miniseries. Again, you kind of know if you want it, or you don't. If you're a God of War fan, you're going to want to check it out. We've had a lot of interest here uh, in pre-orders for it. And finally, the last single issue is Batman Urban Legends, issue number one. This is an anthology series with stories featuring Red Hood, Grifter, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy, and The Outsiders. There is a ton of cool stuff in here. The first story just grabbed me by the throat and would not let me go. It is Red Hood and Batman, written by Chip Zdarsky. That should be enough for you. Artwork by Eddie Barrows and Eber Ferraria. We get an amazing Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy story written by Stephanie Phillips with artwork by Laura Braga. The Outsiders written by Brandon Thomas, art by Max Dunbar, and Grifter written by Matthew Rosenberg, artwork by Ryan Benjamin. So this is a whole lot of Batman universe stuff in Batman Urban Legends uh, with, at, at the very least, a couple of outstanding stories that you don't want to miss. And they are not... Uh, I think they're, they're multiple part stories, yes. So the Red Hood story is part one of six. The Harley Quinn is a one-shot. Uh, Grifter is one of five. Outsiders is one of three. So Batman Urban Legends is your anthology book of the week, although Wolverine, Black, White, and Blood is also out and is a top-notch anthology book. As far as graphic novels, there are a bunch out this week, but the one that I want to bring to your attention is Star Wars Dark Empire. This collects <coughs> excuse me, the Dark Horse... Dark Empire, Dark Empire 2, Empire's End, uh, the Star Wars Handbook, and material from Star Wars Tales, multiple issues of Star Wars Tales. If you want to see sequels to the original trilogy that might leave you feeling a little more satisfied than the sequels that we got, this is the book to check out. Dark Empire is a must, must read. Of course, these were comic book, I believe, comic book adaptations of prose novels. Uh, by Kevin J. Anderson, if I'm not mistaken. I may I may be mistaken, but uh, Anderson is not involved in the writing on this. But good, good stuff. 
This is a must-buy for Star Wars fans. If you don't already have the original issues, or if you just want an easy-to-grab, you know, graphic novel that you can take off your bookshelf. Star Wars Dark Empire, the complete collection out from Marvel Comics in graphic novel format. That's it for this week's new books, but I do want to mention uh, a book that's coming up on Final Order Cutoff this weekend from DC, Batman Fortnite. Uh, has been kind of snuck under the radar. It was a last-minute edition by DC. A lot of people weren't aware of it, but it got a lot of publicity in the last 24 to 48 hours uh, because Batman is going to tackle Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe in issue number three. So this is a six-issue miniseries where Batman and other members of the Bat Universe, I believe, get sucked into the world of Fortnite. Each print copy is going to have a redeemable code for DC... Uh, stuff that you can redeem in Fortnite. The first one is Harley Quinn's Rebirth outfit. You can get that uh, in the first issue. And if you redeem all six codes, you get a bonus seventh code for uh, an armored Batman skin that you can use in Fortnite. But for most comic book fans, the thing that we're excited about is Batman vs. Snake Eyes in issue three. So make sure you let your local comic shop know if you want to add Batman Fortnite to your pull list so you don't miss out on those redeemable codes, but also Batman vs. Snake Eyes in issue number three. What did you enjoy this week? What are you reading that you want to share the love about? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you stay in the loop every time a new episode of Alter Ego Comics TV goes live, uh, or goes up, I should say. And if you're so inclined, you can join me and my better half, my wife Angie, every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time over on our Facebook page where we do our weekly live sale. Sometimes we have comic book creators on as guests, but every week we're slinging new releases and other fun stuff. So if you don't have a local comic shop or if you just want to support Alter Ego, we would love for you to stop by one of our weekly live sales. That's it for me. I hope you have a fantastic new comic book day and rest of the week, and I'll see you again real soon.